Hi everybody, it's Professor Davis here to talk to you about acid-base extraction, which is a subclass of the liquid-liquid extraction technique. So what we're doing here is taking liquid-liquid extractions and using pH to tune them, to make them do what we want. So liquid-liquid extraction is a really great technique for separating certain organic compounds from one another. And I say certain organic compounds because in order to isolate them, each compound in the system must have distinct preferences for one or the other of the two immiscible solvents used. Now, if any of this isn't making sense to you, I recommend that you uh, go back and check out our other videos on liquid-liquid extraction so you understand the technique first. But generally, small organic ions are more soluble in water than they are in organic solvents. And the converse is true as well, that generally, uncharged organic molecules are more soluble in organic solvents than in water. So if we have a system of two molecules and we want to isolate one from the other, we can exploit this characteristic uh, assuming that one or more of those compounds are titratable, meaning we can protonate or deprotonate them. So our question today is how do we choose the pH of an aqueous layer when conducting a liquid-liquid extraction of this kind? And the answer is we select a pH which will ionize only one of the two compounds in our mixture. And in doing so, we'll create a system where one would prefer to be in the water and the other would prefer to be in the organic. So let's start laying a foundation for understanding how and why we do this. I'm going to begin by talking to you about the molecule naphthol, or 2-naphthol specifically. Uh, 2-naphthol is an aromatic alcohol, which can be deprotonated to form naphthalate. So it's a weak acid with a pKa of about 10. So naphthol will uh, have a water solubility, which is governed by the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which tells us that the amount of charged and uncharged species in an aqueous solution is a function of the difference between that molecule's pKa and the pH of the solution. To put it graphically, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation looks something like this. We have a situation where we have a sort of a sigmoidal plot with a transition point right at the pKa of our compound and extremes that are more than two pH units away where we sort of level off into a situation where we have a nice level percentage ionized. So what this means from the perspective of naphthol is that if we're at pH 6, so I'm going to take my beaker and fill it with uh, aqueous solution buffered to pH 6. In this particular aqueous solvent, I'm going to have very limited solubility, so I can only add so much naphthol because it's going to want to be dissolved neutral naphthol, which is kind of tough. You can look at that molecule and tell it's not terribly water soluble. It's got a lot of hydrophobic regions. But if I move instead to the other side of my plot, I'm now in a position where, if I'm at pH, let's say, 14, where all of that naphthol that's dissolved is deprotonated and therefore is present not as naphthol but as naphthalate. And this maximizes the solubility, meaning that I can get a lot more of my naphthol to dissolve in water because when it goes in there, it becomes deprotonated. And I'm dealing with ion dipole forces, which are holding that solution together. So let's start by taking a look at how naphthol behaves in different systems of different pHs. Again, we have our Henderson-Hasselbalch plot, but this time I've color-coded it so you can see which equilibrium is in play in which region of the plot. And now we're going to take a look closer look at what's going on inside our separatory funnel. So I've defined the organic layer as the top and the aqueous layer as the bottom in this example. Now at pH 6, the equilibrium of interest is the equilibrium between 2-naphthol neutral in the organic layer and also neutral 2-naphthol in the aqueous layer. And remember we said before that the solubility of naphthol in water at this pH is very low because it needs to be going in there as a neutral compound. So only a very small fraction is expected to go into the aqueous layer. But I can alter this partitioning by altering the pH of the aqueous layer. If I move to the other region of my plot, where the pH is now, say, 12, 13, or 14. At this point, it's no longer a competition between neutral naphthol and organic solvent and neutral naphthol and water. Instead, it's a competition between neutral naphthol and organic solvent and 2-naphthalate, the anion 
dissolved in water. Because its solubility is greater, we expect more of the material to move into the aqueous layer as naphthalate. And I can exploit this phenomenon to design a liquid-liquid extraction, which will isolate naphthol in one or the other layer depending on my needs. Okay, so now we're ready to put everything together and actually perform an extraction based upon the principles we've discussed previously. So I've got for you here 2-naphthol, which we know is a weak acid, and also benzoic acid, which is a weak acid itself but somewhat stronger than naphthol with a pKa of about 4. If I plot the Henderson-Hasselbalch plots for phenol in green and for benzoic acid in orange, you see they have the similar shape, but that the transition from low to high ionization percentage occurs at a different pH. So I can exploit this in my liquid-liquid extraction. So let's take a look at what happens at about pH 2. When my aqueous layer is pH 2, both of the compounds prefer to be in the organic layer as neutral species. So right now, I'm not getting a very effective extraction. But if I move to a higher pH, let's say pH 7, I reach a point on the Henderson-Hasselbalch plot where the benzoic acid would prefer to be benzoate in the aqueous layer, but the naphthol still would be neutral if it's dissolved in the aqueous layer. In other words, the benzoic acid is expected to dissolve better into the water. So at this point, I would expect that my benzoic acid will move into the water as benzoate. So at this pH, I could conduct an effective extraction because the solubility behavior of these two compounds is so different. If I go even higher in pH, however, I reach a point where I've crossed the pKa of the naphthol as well. So now my naphthol equilibrium is between neutral in the organic and charged in the aqueous. And just like the benzoic acid did, it's going to come over as well. So at pH 2, everything accumulates in the organic. And at pH 12, everything accumulates in the aqueous layer. So these are suboptimal choices for a liquid-liquid extraction of these two compounds. But because of my understanding of the Henderson-Hasselbalch plot and how being ionized affects the solubility of organic compounds, I can choose the proper aqueous layer for my extraction, which would be a pH of somewhere around 7. That's it for now. We'll do an even more complicated one next time, and I'll see you then.